Hey there, and uh, welcome to this little uh, short video. I'm going. I don't know if I'd consider it a making of. It's just sort of like a uh, technique explanation video for a um, recent project that I was just working on. A lot of people had some questions about how I did it. So um, this is for the, those of you on uh, the Blender RS thread and some of my subscribers on YouTube. Um, it's a really useful technique, and I think you'll uh, find it. Um, you'll use it a lot throughout like uh, hard surface uh, modeling and uh, a lot of the modern designs these days have this sort of style that I'm going to explain. Um, first of all, um, speaking of those on the Blender RS thread, um, like uh, the uh, techniques that you suggested that I use not one of them was like straight on, but like a combination of some of the things that you said. So um, I'm just gonna show you how I did it. And um, first thing I want to say is I didn't use strictly Blender for it, of course. Um, I use ZBrush, but I use a technique that you can actually still sort of do in Blender. It just takes a little more time. So first, I'm gonna show you how to do it in ZBrush. For those of you who have ZBrush. Um, try to keep it short as possible but um here's the model and you'll see that it's composed of basically segments of armor that I use and um this was the concept that I started with it was just a sculpted mesh um really messy and all I did was just retopo right on top of it made the pieces extruded them inward and um, you know, I, I'm going to show you do that, basically. Um, so what you're going to have to start off with is uh, a Z-sphere. Go down to rigging. And this this technique, by the way, I learned from Mike Jensen and his uh, hard surface tutorial. Really neat DVD. You should probably check it out sometime if you want to do things strictly in ZBrush. I'm not going to explain all of it here, just the piece creation type of thing, but you're going to want to go to uh, rigging, select mesh, polysphere, or whatever mesh you're trying to retopo, edit topology, and then adaptive skin, turn it down to one so that it's not subdivided, and then uh, this really depends on the normals, either negative or positive, negative 0.1. Um, let's just get started, just to... Uh, show you how I did it. Um, so, of course this is going to be a little bit uh, dull, of course. Um, I mean, rate topology, that's probably one of the most boring things like ever in 3D, I, I, I'd consider it. But really, it's the only way you're going to make a really good looking mesh in the end. Um, any of you who just, you know, do things <laughs> and never retopologize, you're gonna start. You're gonna end up with something that just has horrible topology. Even though it has, it may look somewhat good. It's not gonna animate well, or you're not gonna be able to sculpt on it. It's a good uh, skill to have. But okay, so the basic structure of this piece that I'm going to make is just going to demonstrate some of the problems that you might run into um, with traditional programs uh, like whenever you want to do hard surface type of stuff. So you're going to start out with a very um, basic sort of shape like this. The topology isn't particularly important except for you want to have lines along where you want uh, like crease points to be where you want things to have sharpness and like certain points where you want it to be like cut off or like as if it was machined or like welded or whatever. So once you have this, and I'm just saying A to preview, you want to hit adaptive, make adaptive skin. And then with this mesh, you're going to notice that it has a poly group around the edge, which is nice for um, different stuff that you can do. And then you have creasing along the edges, uh, both front and back. So what that does is whenever you subdivide it, it's going to retain that edge right there. 
And this is a very interesting feature. I thought I thought at first that you can do this within Blender. I thought it was like you could only do this within um, ZBrush. But um, okay, what I just did there is I just selected a piece and hit crease. So what crease is going to do is along the faces, along the borders that you have uh, selected within the hidden marquee or whatever, um, it's going to crease along those borders. So you see why it, it's going to be uh, designated by that dotted line. I'm not sure if you can see it, but um, yeah, that's how you can tell that it's been creased, so-called. But you'll see that it has a really nice, just like sharp, then smooth, and that's that's what you're looking for whenever you're making the sort of style that I demonstrated with the uh, astronaut model. So this is all fine and dandy, um, but what if I wanted to do something like right through the middle? Um, you can do that. Just um, hide half of it and crease. And um, if you want things like right there, same process. You don't have to do it on both faces, just one of them. And another thing to note is if you're to try and crease just everything, um, depends on the uh, C tolerance right over here. And the crease button, it isn't normally located over, the, over there. It's in uh, the geometry tablet, or no, tablet, uh, palette. But um, if you hit create or well, hit crease, and then you just do it with the bare model, you're gonna get all these weird like facet type of stuff, and you don't want that. So what you can instead do is turn crease tolerance all the way up, and that way you make sure that it will never do it automatically, other than the faces that you have hidden along like the borders. So it'll still crease it along those borders, but you won't have the nastiness. So that's how you get that sort of um, creasing within ZBrush. And afterwards, after I've done something like this, usually just so that I have even topology distribution, because you'll see that in some of the areas there might be some oblong polygons and things like that. If you want something to look the way it looks right now, but have better topology. It's like a rapid sort of uh, retopology tool, but it's not ideal for a final mesh, but something you're just sculpting. There's this little feature called DynaMesh. And um, the things I use uh, just to keep it, if you have a lot of memory, you can go all the way up to 124 and get all the detail you want. Um, but I usually stick around uh, 300, 200, something like that. I turn on polish and project. This, what it does is it um, gathers polys in the creased areas so that it retains that whenever you're, you're subdividing it afterwards. Then project just makes it project back onto the mesh. It, it uh, uses some more processing time, but it's a good thing to have on. Just hit no. And you'll see, I think this is pretty brilliant, but you have just like even poly distribution, like throughout the entire thing except for on the creases it's a little more high but what this allows you to do is um, just uh, like have really nice you might have to subdivide but just have really nice uh, ability to detail even without having to uh, do the regular retopology process and then re-import it and all that junk you can just the uh, shortcut for re meshing is control and then dragging out and it'll do it. So whenever you again get like uh, like really stretched out like stuff, see that that, that just looks horrible. re mesh and no stretching whatsoever. It's just it's brilliant. That's the only advantage I see um, besides just speed for using ZBrush in this process so that you're able to have this amount of detail without having to retopo um, traditionally. So now I'm going to show you how to do that in Blender. Uh, so I'm going to start out, just delete everything. 
um, with the UV sphere. Subdivide it. And then I'm just going to do the same process as I did in ZBrush, the same kind of shape. So you're going to want to turn on um, snapping tools, um, volume, yeah, no, face, and then this uh, projects to elements on the surface of other objects, which allows you to do retail pulling. Um, you might be able not to see it if it goes through the mesh like that. Just um, hit Z and then like select all if you need to in order to do that. I'm going to turn on optimal display. Okay, there we go. So, I'm going to go through make the same shape, basically. And whenever you insert an edge loop, make sure to grab it afterwards so that it snaps to the surface. Um, that's one thing you just want to remember. So I basically have the same shape, at least I think. Um, so the first thing that you're going to, like, at first you're probably going to say, oh, I just extrude it in and that'll be good. Um, but I'd say instead of doing that, just use solidify. It's what I use for the majority of what I do. Um, you can, s the same thickness, amazingly, is about proportional to what ZBrush has, so you can use 0.1. That usually works pretty well. I'm going to, just because it's smaller, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. But, um, so, you'll see now, whenever you add the subsurface, it's not going to do that nice creasing you got with the, uh, like, the group along the edge. So, normally, alright, so, normally what you do is, like, hit apply, and then you have your mesh right here. And you do, like, this stuff, and edge slide over and this, and it, it gets laborious, and you're just, like, you know, it, it takes a lot of time to do this sort of stuff, and to get those sharp edges that you want in the corners, you're going to have to add a lot of edge loops, and that was one of the things that um, you guys got wrong, was I didn't use a whole bunch of edge loops to get the creases, I just used a different feature, which is... Um, called creasing. I'm not sure when it was implemented, to be honest. Um, I think it might have been... Whoa, not that much. Um, like, I doubt it was in pre-2.5, uh, but it's really nice within the solidify modifier you have this creasing option right here, inner and outer and you get the exact same results as what you had in ZBrush. And I think that's pretty nice right there. So if you hit apply, you can see they're marked purple. That means that they're creased. And there's an option right here, creasing right there. You can either do that, or you can hit Shift E, and it'll do basically the same thing. So to get the same type of shape, um, you can just, well, I, you probably want to hit select, uh, edges for this sort of thing, but, um, even if you want to do this sort of, th this, uh, crease down the middle, which normally you, you get, like, really weird, like, I'm trying to avoid using this these days just because it adds so much density to your meshes and you have to adjust for it afterwards, and it ends up being a headache in the end, to be honest. And, um, so I just, I'm trying to use this a little bit more, just because it, it results in a much cleaner type of mesh. And you can up the subdivisions a little bit. Sort of pinching right here, you might have noticed it's on the ZBrush model as well. You can just solve that using some smoothing afterwards with like a sculpt brush, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's how you get the mesh. And once you have this, I suppose you could use Blender's uh, sculpting system to add some details in here. 
though it wouldn't be quite as polished and like exact as what you'd get in ZBrush. So I'd recommend maybe making some separate meshes and putting it on top of this and then baking a normal map for the really small details. But other than that, I think I might show you the studio lighting. I think, yeah, here we go. This is the cycle setup that I had. Um, just three basic lights and a uh, kind of a plane over here. And that's why I used to render out the suit. And you'll notice that this is really actually a nasty <laughs> decimated mesh because I used ZBrush and DynaMesh to get all the details in. I just had it zoomed out so that it wouldn't look quite as horrible. <laughs> but if I had like some kind of supercomputer that could rend render like two million polys, then that would be that would be nice. But uh, sadly, I don't, so I have to use decimation. But um, yeah, I think that's about it. If you need any uh. Well, feel free to, you know, ask questions about other stuff that I didn't cover or whatever. Uh, and, uh, like, send me stuff that you make using this technique. I'd love to see, uh, some, like, vehicles or mechs like this, whatever. And, uh, hope you enjoy this video. Uh, bye.